What's up everybody? Welcome to Podcast Now, Back to the Past. I'm Alex, and in this video, I want to go back and talk about Astros Playroom in celebration of what could perhaps be the biggest and best game of the fall, uh, Astrobot. Now, there's a couple games that are in there, but Astrobot looks freaking phenomenal. I cannot wait to play it, and it reminded me, and I'm so glad this happened, right? Because I go back, I remember loving, loving Astros Playroom, and for the value that you get for the game being free, by the way, it might be the best deal out there. I go back, I play Astros Playroom, and to be honest with you, it is a much better game than I gave a even though I loved it, it's a much better game than I gave a credit for four years ago. And, you know, it, it harkens back to the time where Japan Studios was alive, if you recall. This technically came from Japan Studios. It was, you know, from Team Asobi. It was like a subdivision of it. And I, I think about six, seven months after this game came out, that's when uh, Japan Studio was shut down and they kind of branched off Team Asobi. They were moved into PlayStation Studios and the rest is history. But my dear God, what a game. I've talked about it before, like, and especially replaying it. I really believe this might be a top three, top four PlayStation game. You think to like the Spider Man's, God of Wars, Returnal, and then you would get into like maybe Final Fantasies and Astrobot. And I think I would put or Astro's Playroom. I think I'd put Astro's Playroom like top three, top four, to be honest with you. It is such a fun time. Even though it's very short, in replaying it, I put in about two and a half hours, and I got through the entire thing. I set records. I mean, my own personal records, I guess. I set records in all of the time trials, and I felt really good about what I experienced. Now, I think it would obviously, it did take me longer back then. You're getting used to the controls. You're utilizing the amazing DualSense controller, and you know, you're looking for all the little things. I still was, right? And in fact, this time, I actually feel like I got more. I feel like I was purposely trying to go off the beaten track, collect as much as I could in the worlds and you'll know, see just that respect level for the PlayStation ecosystem. I think this honestly is just a joy and a delight of a game. I really believe that and it makes me so insanely confident, about as confident as you can be for Astrobot because I just feel like these people you know know what they're doing. So let's talk about Astro's Playroom for a little and maybe let's start you know with the history. I, I think I think in terms of how this game is designed just in general, it is about as perfect of a game as you know somebody like me could ask for. Now, I'm into all sorts of different types of games, but to be a platformer, and a really fun platformer, right? You know, you got to do something to spice it up. Like, just being a platformer isn't enough, right? You got to have something else to it. And the thing to Astro's Playroom is the respect for PlayStation. So, in every one of these worlds, in which, by the way, they're different compartments of consoles, right? They're going to be themed, and you're going to be in different locations and seeing these different characters. You'll see the Kratos and, you know, Atreus. You'll see Sly Cooper. You'll see Nathan Drake, right, climbing the plane from Uncharted 1. And it's just so perfect to, to, number one, see all of these characters, in which there are just so many, but also to see, at least I find joy in this, to see, like, what they're actually doing. Like, can you spot what game it is, right? So, like, God of Wars from 2018. But, like, Uncharted, like, you, you're trying to spot, okay, well, which game or which parts of these games do they go to, right? You see Days Gone, and you see him riding around, you know, with all the zombies, and it's just... It's so perfect, and now in this game, it's more of just a glorified Easter egg, right? They're there. You can interact with them in the sense that you can, like, hit them, and you can kind of get them out of their animation, but then they'll just go back into the animation, right? And you see, like, PlayStation Studios, like, you know, filming the whole thing. It's so perfect, and, you know, again, that's why I love the idea of Astrobot, where now you're rescuing them. Now you might be able to, it seems like, actually maybe it's even confirmed, you're going to be using, like, their weapons at some points in the game. So, you know, kind of taking that initial idea of, hey, can you think of anything? Like, can you think of Heavy Rain? Can you think of Beyond Two Souls? Can you think about whatever? You know, Silent Hill, you see Pyramid Head in this. Think about any of them. They're probably in this game. I mean, you see freaking Starhawk and all of these different things. It's incredible. The respect and care for even some like really small ones, like obviously a Parappa the Rapper and, you know, Patapon and all that stuff. I mean, it's so unbelievably good. So, that, you know, that's one part to it. There's the collectible section of it, um, which obviously is just, you know, different components, or you might get the PS2. You might get the iToy, which I actually had the iToy growing up, played Star Wars on it, and absolutely loved it, even though it couldn't read like my, you know, it was early technology, but it's so cool to just, again, see it, and you can interact with it, right? Turn it on, turn it off. It's also a very beautiful game. It's something that I I don't know if I forgot about, but you think, okay, well, this was a, this was a launch game for the PS5. 
the colors that Astro like has in the entire world, like it does pop. And I actually think this is a better looking game than like most games that have come out, you know, in the last like four or five years. It truly is impressive. So when you're seeing, when you see the PS4 or you see the uh, the device that you plug in the PSVR one in, right, that box, and I think it even says like that, uh, you know, nobody knows like what this thing does. Like it looks as if you could just you know reach out and you'll grab these things. So I think you know visually the sounds of it all uh, when you're breaking things when you're finding it are so unbelievably incredible. So there's the respect with the characters. There's the respect with accessories and consoles. You know different things like that. And then a huge part of this game, which I, I do not want to uh, undervalue or anything like that, is the dual sense and. This is something that I should have seen coming. I saw it coming, or I knew it happened, you know, with the, the Vita and just, you know, past experiences in general. I don't know why we keep doing this, right? PlayStation, in my opinion, makes the best controller of all time, in my opinion, with a dual sense. Now, again, I've always been, like, I get the Xbox controller. It's kind of a different, like, hand configuration versus PlayStation. People prefer one or the other. I've always liked PlayStation, even though, yeah, I mean, you think to, like, PS2 and even PS3, very small. I think over the, you know, the years, I think PS4, PS5, I think these controllers, DualShock, DualSense, have been incredible. Why is it that we get like one or two games that pushes it to the extreme and just knows how to make the greatest controller type game of all time and nobody else even remotely tries? Now, there are some games that, you know, can do the adaptive triggers, right, where if you're pulling it, you can feel it. I think even like maybe Horizon does it, right? Depending on if it's first party versus third party, they might push it more, they might push it less, but... For a game like this to be, and this is another actually special thing about it, this was a launch game. This wasn't a game like one or two years in when they finally, you know, cracked the code and then nobody did it afterwards still. No, no, no. This was literally day one. You get it for free. So it's the highest selling PS5 game of all time, right? You get it for free to get the PS5 and they immediately crack the code of what makes the dual sense an incredible controller whether it's blowing into it which by the way like what other game is there even any other game that literally uses that i mean i know you can like you can talk like the speaker right you can just say words and it'll pick you up but like to blow in it to be able to use the touchpad which you know has been uh you know evolved and used i guess over the years but the adaptive triggers and when he's on ice when he's on ice skates and you can feel it or going through water and you can freaking feel it inside the dual sense controller what other game returnal returnal has some of that right but what game has it all only as only astro's playroom so i mean i said it when it first came out i, I mean it, it's a joke but it's also not like this is the game for the dual sense it's the best game that uses the dual sense and no other game is even you know remotely close it also by the way is you know if you're looking like the history books in terms of a game like showing off an accessory i guess in, unless you think like late game like a uh, uncharted 2 might show you how the ps3 could work at that time right but if you're looking for like okay what's the game that shows off that console i think astro's playroom is the game that shows off the ps5 immediately ratchet and clank rift apart probably does you know the the super fast ssd and stuff but you know astro has quick loading has the visuals has that pop and then also has the dual sense so i just feel like it's kind of that overall package then there's the gameplay itself, which I think this game, and that's probably what you focus the least on. And maybe that's what I did the first time, right? Where, hey, this is a cool companion piece to the PS5. It's free, uses the dual sense in amazing ways, has all the cameos, has all this cool, you know, uh, historical respect to PlayStation. But the game is also extremely good. This is a really good platformer. The levels are incredibly diverse. Uh, there's things off each beaten path, right? You go left instead of right, you're going to find something. And it's not too challenging, but there's definitely things that you might not even spot on the first time. Or then they break you out of just using Astro, right? You get into the the suits that are like the monkey suit where that's really where it starts to do the, you know, the adaptive triggers or the ball in which you're rolling on the touchpad and you could stop it, right? So they take you out of it here and there, or I guess the, the jet pack. We can just do all three of them, right? Um, some incredible, incredible stuff that they make you do as you go through the game. They're all fun. They're all diverse. All of the environments and levels are so super different. And again, like, you know, having it be parts of the console, you know what I mean? Like you have like the cooling chambers and it's unbelievable how they take 
just these like elements of a console and say, well, what if we like, you know, a jungle level or a, a an ice level? You know, like let's kind of expand. What does cooling mean? What does like can we do like a memory storage? Like how does the cloud and all that stuff like how would that work in a level? Well, let's just do it. Right. It's unreal. It's unreal. The creativity because, you know, like using the icons of PlayStation, you know, there's respect there because it's like, well, some of them are deep cuts. Like they didn't have to go that deep. Right. But, you know, you just scroll through Wikipedia, pick all these characters. That wouldn't be that difficult. But in terms of this and, and not just creating levels that are fun platform levels and, you know, having enemies and having your like double jumps and like kind of gliding with lasers and all that stuff. You know, you have all that and then that's creative and that takes a lot of work, too. But just the levels in general are unreal. And then they're so expertly designed, at least in my opinion, because they translate so perfectly to speed runs. So you unlock speed runs, you know, as you go through, you get coins, in which case you can do the uh, the arm claw thing, which I love just kind of rapid. You could probably see it in the footage, just like rapid firing it where you pick it up and, you know, you squeeze the, the, the triggers and, you, you know, you could feel like that pressure of the claw, like, you know, breaking the ball. It, I mean, the more I talk about this game, and that's why I like to make these videos as well, the game is so good. I'm so glad I replayed it. It got me, again, not just back into, oh, these guys know the respect, right? They, they know the history of PlayStation. No, these guys made a really good platformer. It's short. It, it's not going to take you long. Literally, you could complete it in one night. And even when it first came out, I probably beat it in like two days. And that was me very slowly, although I would miss things, but I would, you know, I would stare. I'd see Nathan Drake and I would say, let's just watch it you know let's just watch it for five ten minutes that can take up some time right uh this time i didn't do that this is just an all-around amazing game the length is probably like the weakest element of it because it's like and i felt this when playing it's like just give me more like can, can you just expand on a little bit more and to be honest with you that's exactly what astrobot is 80 levels all of this stuff all these characters gonna take you know 10 12 hours to beat you know so that's roughly like four or five times the length of astro's play that's perfect that's exactly what i, I mean that's literally what i wanted and i'm willing to pay any price for i mean yeah to go from free to paying whatever it is 60 70 dollars for uh, i think it's 60 for astro bot you know that's that's jumping up when you start from a free uh free perspective but you know i think it's absolutely going to be worth it so you let me know what you guys think about astro's playroom make sure as always you're subscribed to the channel bell icon turn on i hope to see you all on the next one